Hello everyone and welcome to my channel and today I'll be reading a multi-character listener by me. So let's get into it. Kaza. Kaza did not expect to wake up his name being screamed at him at the ungodly hour of three in the morning. But there he is. And you were just setting up. Right next to him, you're breathing erratic as your thoughts were, and your heart beats quick. Um, Moyan, what happened? That's when you wrapped your arms around him tightly and held him close, clinging to him. Please don't leave me again. Please, don't get yourself hurt like that again. You had zero idea what you were talking about. But for the sake of making sure that you're alright, he was simply going to hold you now, stroking your hair gently, and leaving all the questions for later. They were going to wait. Meanwhile, you could not. And as you were done with your crying, you had told him it was just a nightmare. But you were so shaken because it looked so realistic. You told him you wouldn't describe it because it was so gruesome, and he agreed. He shouldn't make you relive whatever happened in that nightmare, just because of his own curiosity. And thankfully, after cuddling up in his arms, he would end up falling into a peaceful slumber, one without any of the nightmares that you were having. Albedo. Albedo had no idea why you would be screaming in the lab. Nothing could be happening and no one else was around. So what exactly was making you scream? And as he walked in on you, he just saw you looking at the solution. And he understood what you were having right now. It was called frustration. Whenever you were frustrated with an experiment that went wrong, you would just scream out his name like you would be able to solve it. And honestly, it was hilarious in times. So right now, you just sit next to you, wrapping his arms around you. There, there, Wyon. You did great. No reason to be so upset. But it didn't go well. I really, really worked hard this time. I know you did. That doesn't change that sometimes it may not work. And it's fine. He kissed you softly. What matters is that you worked hard. You'll be able to make it work someday. Trust me. You do trust him, but you won't lie and say you weren't disappointed. So he did cuddle you for a while, just to make the sadness go away. Venti. Oh no. This was not a good sign. You were screaming his name, but you were angry, and he could hear it just from the way you were screaming it. And that's when Venti knew. He really, really messed up. As he now sit before you, staring at you and fidgeting, while trying his absolute best not to laugh. He ended up destroying one of your clothes when he spilled wine on it last night, and you had only found out now. And you were scolding him, while he could only hold back giggles. Sorry, my aunt. I really didn't mean to. Well, now you gotta buy me another one. Sure thing. Just don't be upset with me. Fine, Venti, he said. After all, not everyone could resist Venti, especially not those cute, adorable puffy eyes of his. They were irresistible, and everybody knew that, especially you. Skirmish. That's when he sprang to your room. He had heard you screaming out of nowhere, and the worst thought just came to his mind. But... All you were screaming about was a damn spider. Oh, scary, I'm so scared of it. Can you just kill it, please? It's a spider, my aunt. It's, it's so small. Why are you so scared of it? He says, giving you a scornful look. Well, it's... Aren't you scared? Huh? Me? I can't be scared of something as stupid as that. That's what he said until his feather jumped onto him, and he too was screaming. Maybe I was scared, and the two of you ended up leaving the house for a little while. 
until Nahira just came and told you that it was a very friendly spider, and there was no reason the TV should ever have to kill it at all. So, she does show you it's friendly, but even then, Scaramouche asks her to take the spider with her, and she ends up listening anyway, and bidding you farewell. He would never listen to your screams again. You deal with your spiders on your own. He's sleeping. Tonari? You were screaming his name out in a very lewd way. And that's when he came to your room. Blushing. Man, is something wrong? He asked. But there you are, laying on bed, with thigh highs on and a short skirt and a crop top. Well, nothing's wrong. But I feel like I've missed you. Oh no. This was not going to end well for him. At all. He had some things to do. He had absolutely zero time to be dealing with you, especially when you were like this. But he can deny how pretty you are. And how much he wants to get his hands on you. And that's how the two of you end up together. With you seated on Tanar's lap as he dealt with some paperwork that he promised you he would finish very quickly to deal with the other important work that he had to finish with you. You are very patient indeed, agreeing to sit on his lap until he was done. Shall? Well, well, this was a test. Your friend told you to scream out his name randomly to see if he would actually show up like he promised, and he did indeed show up. But he was terrified, thinking that something had happened to you. That's when you apologize and tell him that the only reason you screamed so loudly was because you weren't sure if he'd hear you otherwise. My aunt, I told you to call me when you're in danger. Not like this. Well, I'm sorry. I really missed you and my friend wanted to get to know you. He said, feeling guilty for making him worry. And that's when Shao let out a sigh, and just when you thought he would leave, he ended up raising your friend and staying with you the entire day. He didn't have much to do, and he wouldn't mind making some more effort to be with you and be a better boyfriend, as he really hopes he can be, just for your sake, because deep inside, he knows you deserve nothing less.